Hi, I'm Chappington, and welcome back to Skrelica. This is chapter 14, talking about the Lake Asoban Dam. The Sigwin River, the main river going through the heart of Skrelica, was navigable by all ships up to Middleton, where there was a bridge completed in 1769. Some smaller ships and barges could fit under there, but the problem was the river was only kind of navigable further upstream from there. Either you had to have sails and the right wind conditions or lots of people rowing. It's kind of flat, but there was enough of a flow that made it, made it challenging to navigate. The river was easily navigable past Lake Asoban too, so the stretch between Middleton and West Abenakibara was a significant barrier to easy inland transportation. Now this was a bit of a problem, but not significant enough to spur any sort of major river infrastructure investment, but there were two other needs that came up and intersected to make the construction of a dam feasible. It was flood control and drinking water. While Skrelborough had continually maintained its flood walls, the flood beggar, other towns upstream didn't have such extensive protection, and early spring flooding had come perilously close to damaging Haven and West Abbey Nakibara in 1819, enough to scare the thing into action. And so they planned to build a dam and a lock at the western end of Lake Asaiban, and construction was completed in 1822. The placement of the dam slightly expanded the lake, and this would also allow it to serve as a reservoir for the Greater Skrelborough region, because the coming back to the drinking water, up until now, it, everyone had been relying on an ad hoc system of wells, but with the massive population growth, they were becoming insufficient. The more people relied on the wells, the more easily they dry up and the water quality was lower. It was generally just not going to support further growth. Once the new locks were built, it quickly allowed industry to expand in West Abenakibara, now that the larger boats could access it, though they were still restricted by the height of the bridge in Middleton. Within just a few years, traffic clogged up the lock, spurring many to explore alternate routes through or around Abenakibara. So far on screen, just been figuring out the shape of the dam. We put in a bridge there to try to have a road connection that later goes away. And then we've added some seawalls because the water level is going to go up by Abenakibara. I managed to make it not go up too much, but enough that I had to demolish a building or two. Probably be more realistic to damage even more buildings, but again, I don't like demolishing my work. <laughs> One of the first parts of this is using some of Do Not Eat's assets. There's some water facility in or around Philly, uh, so I use that. Though the concrete pillars could probably do with a uh, touch up there to hide them just because the way that City Skylines handles foundations. So now we have a proper municipal water system that's not just relying on a few wells. So I'm using these locks by Epic Lurker, who also made some Dutch canals. These locks are actually pretty great because while they look, when you're using them, they look very weird until everything's in place but they allow the water simulation to still work. They act, well, there's different parts of it, but one of the parts is just an invisible canal that also hides the water, but the water is still flowing through it. And then the other part is just the decorative piece that actually makes it look like a lock rather than just a weird portal to the sky below the earth. The net effect of all of that is well, you get to make a lock that at least lets water flow through it, so you can pretend that it's functional, even though it doesn't function in terms of letting ships through, but it doesn't mess with the water system too badly. There's a lot of learning as I'm doing this. This is the first time that I've ever worked with these locks, and because they are working with the water system, there's, there's a lot of finagling to do. So one of the weird things is the water simulation runs 
on its own grid, and if everything you have lines up with that grid, then it's perfect and super easy to work with. But if it doesn't line up with the grid, things get and can look a little bit wonky. So you can kind of see like jagged edges because it's it's showing where like the grid squares are for the water. And under most normal circumstances, you won't see this grid. But yeah, dealing with locks is kind of beyond the original scope of the game. And then eventually I realized that having a bridge over the lock isn't really going to work at the elevation that I have. I alluded to this earlier, but while they're looking at other options of getting through Abenakibara, there's probably going to be a much bigger canal and lock system that'll bypass this little tiny one. And then at that point, I might actually be able to turn this into a full road connection. Is it is like... It makes sense because there's a canal in the way, but it's a little weird seeing like, oh, the roads get so close to touching, but not quite. And then based on the height difference we have, we end up going with a uh, the three-tier setup for the locks. It's definitely the, the height difference here and the water flow. That's realistically, there's no way that this was ever navigable at all. But um, kind of when I built the map, I wanted to have some sort of water flow and still pretend that it was kind of navigable. So after kind of adding some more water sources and getting the river filling up again, I looked for like, oh, do I have like a texture that I can use to take care of the slope on the other side? But eventually I end up going with the breakwater rocks, which I think it ends up looking pretty good. Makes it look kind of like a more natural, or uh, well not natural, but a more earthen dam. There's these outlets that come with the Do Not Eat water facility. They don't seem to like actually function as anything, but I thought they'd look neat as like decorative elements on either side to kind of mark the boundary between the dam and just the normal terrain nearby. And then here I do have another attempt at building a bridge over the canal area, over the locks, but I'm kind of realizing that it looks a little bit out of place. And then when I actually go to look for some boats that will fit, then I realize that, oh, well, these boats have sails and you have to build the bridge quite a bit higher and it just is not going to look good. So I settle on disconnecting the roads and we'll leave it like this for now. The way the canals are set up, the terrain's a little wonky right next to it. 
So I used the ploppable surfaces to create a fake surface that would connect the two areas. Once that's put together, like those those surfaces look kind of out of place, just in the middle of nowhere, where they're that wide. So after I have an attempt at finding another bridge and give up on that, uh, start to add some industrial buildings along the slope here. And kind of in a terrace setup where it looks kind of like one continuous building, but like different layers, kind of just like steps, basically. Getting the transition between the canal and an actual body of water look a little bit weird. So I added some rocks in there to try to at least blend it in a little bit better. And decide to add like a tiny little, not even village, just like a collection of houses at the other side of the dam. We've got this industry right next to the locks, and we've got where the actual water pumping station is but now we want to start to fill in the area between between those parts and the town of West Abenakibara. Because while this is all going on, like we've passed 1815, now there's another huge wage of immigration coming, and so all the towns are going to grow a lot more. So it makes sense to start filling in this area with development. Then I also add in a dock down here. In game, the main reason is to set up the river ferry system to still extend to West Abenakibara because it was cut off by the dam. But also this allows one of the potential bypass routes of this lock is while well, you can ship stuff to that dock and then just cart it up the hill or down the hill um, to the other dock that's further up. It's not especially efficient, but it does get around the issue of the lock traffic. And there's a lot of messing with the node controller to make sure the cobblestone roads kind of fit here. And now there's going to be some infill development, because while some of these sheep pens have survived in basically the middle of town, now it's going to get filled in.
when we're filling this in, just trying to figure out uh, like what buildings we want to put in and end up going with the mill housing again. It really works for this time period and the buildings are just so good. And I was looking into using some brownstones, but it didn't quite fit in. And then also some of the surrounding farms are going to get developed now. Also fit in a church because that was a bit of an oversight that this town didn't have a church which yeah definitely the time period that wouldn't have made sense and especially when this was part of Massachusetts a very Puritan colony at the time there is no way there wouldn't have been a church there. Here I actually start trying to squeeze in some commercial development and like a little park space but in this little park area we've got not one but two pubs so that counts as a commercial for the area. And then once we finish putting in some more row housing, the last thing to do is to detail this lock industrial area, because otherwise the palpable surfaces look kind of just empty and barren. So this gives some life to it, even if adding these props and fixing the elevation each time gets really annoying because the actual elevation of the terrain is way below there and variable. Yeah, so this was definitely a shorter chapter than normal. Yeah, a combination of paternity leave and this just stomach bug cold thing ping-ponging around every member of this house. Um, it's been uh, it's been a fun week, couple weeks. So, so I thought rather than doing what I normally do, which is just having nothing come out for a couple months, I decided to try to put something smaller. Maybe not quite bite-sized, but something smaller, get this video out, and then we'll continue working on just doing the expanding the and rebuilding the towns. And I'll get back to modeling, so I'll at least have some some nice transportation vehicles to go along with this. And that's all future plans. So I wanna also be able to squeeze in at least a few updates before City Skylines 2 comes out. Because uh, I did make a YouTube post about that, but basically I think I'm going to try to get Skrelliga to move into City Skylines 2, but it's obviously going to take a while before it's in any position where that could feasibly be achieved. And even then it probably won't be a one-to-one -one recreation anyway. Um, but yeah, so this is the, the process of me building the Lake Outside Bound Dam and the expansion of West Abenaki Barra nearby. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this. More content to come, hopefully. At least going to try to aim for monthly. That's that's going to be my bare minimum. <laughs> we'll see if we even meet that. But anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one.